It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making your way here, checking out the series. Uh, Please do hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all the interviews that we put out every single week. It's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones at iTunes, Apple Podcasts, at Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcasts from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest is Malia Kreiling. We're going to be talking about the new uh, Prime video series called Mammals. It has her uh, starring opposite James Corden. Uh, who's a, a chef and and they're married and there's not a lot I can say about it <laughs> because let me tell you in the six episodes uh, I have never had my jaw hit the floor on twists and turns so many times as I did in recent memory with this series mammal right here right from the beginning you get just you know you think you know what's going on and then uh, suddenly uh, Tom Jones is around and everything goes wacky uh, not because of Tom Jones but I'm sure he doesn't actually help uh, it's it it deals with infidelity it deals with love it deals with morals it deals with uh, well, it deals with a lot of stuff. And in fact, that's some of the stuff that we get to talk about here in this interview with Malia as we try to uh, talk about a series that that uh, that really does explore the truths at the heart of modern relationships. Uh, Malia is going to walk us through getting her script, her first reactions that she had upon reading it, uh, the, the show's ability to provide a space for a conversation, as she says. And we'll kind of try to figure out who the hero might be in this story. Uh, Millie is also going to tell us about how the art of Kintsugi has influenced her, as well as the music of uh, Nick Cave and Patti Smith. Uh, in fact, there's a story about her going to see a Nick Cave show with one of the members of uh, Death Cab for Cutie that we'll get in here as well. All that's and a whole lot more. It's Kyle Meredith with Malia Kreiling. Hi, Kyle. Nice Hi, Malia. Yeah, Hi. nice to talk to you. Nice to meet you. Thank nice you to us. meet you, too. I, yeah. I'm seeing a photo of you (laughs) (laughs) that's as close as we get these days but yeah great sunglasses (laughs) (laughs) thank you well hey uh first off congratulations uh on mammals this has been one of the wildest adventures i've watched over a handful of episodes all year long what an incredible story and what what a beautiful beautifully acted story that you all have done Thank you. That's very nice to hear. <laughs> You've watched all all the episodes, all six episodes. Oh, all six episodes. Yeah, oh, and great. and then and then just went. No, I want more. That's exactly what oh. I wanted afterwards. So. Oh, that's that's good to hear. That's that's a relief to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just, so. I, I'd love to hear the journey. You know, uh, up to to you. You know. Well, up to you reading the script and everything and how it unfolded because because I know uh, well judging from some of the other interviews that you've done like this is something that you all have had to keep a little secretive especially because the plot for the last couple of years like how did you end up with this role and 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 I would love to know what you thought when you first read that script <laughs> yeah um well uh, you know I I was I was sent. Um, I was sent the sort of a, 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 also a vague breakdown of the story, and then some scenes to read. And just from those, just from that handful of scenes, I could tell this was something really special. And it was a character that I felt instantly familiar with, even though I didn't have the whole story available to me immediately. Um, and I just. It was it was a it was a very sort of instinctive reaction that I had towards it, and I I just knew that, you know, I really had to do my best to try and to try and get in the running at least, um, and uh, yeah, and then you know, I sent in an audition with what I thought this character was, and gratefully it worked out for me, <laughs> um, and then I you know I I got I got the rest of the scripts and. It was just 
it was mind blowing to to read, um, and it and even to this day, it's mind blowing to see that what was in the scripts originally is what we're seeing on screen now. A lot of the times, scripts change along the way, and and this was just such a well thought out um, piece by Jess Butterworth. Um, so it it we really stayed to to the original script the entire time it was just incredible or at least you know to the to the script that that was available at the point where i was reading it you know right. of course jez had worked on it uh before but it is one of the craziest first episodes i've ever seen i i, I will say that i mean <laughs> i mean when the, when the drop happens and and then yeah. continues to happen throughout like that's <laughs> Like, I, that's what I would imagine, like, you know, for an actor, when you're taking in this script, I mean, this is, you know, must read like, you know, just one of the great stories, you know, I'm thinking like the crime novels and everything or, or something like that, mm -hmm. because once you think you have a grasp on it, it all sort of flips several times throughout it. And that I think that was the part of the second question is what was that like for you to kind of go through here? And like, did you think you knew where it was going? I mean, how did you react? <laughs> I the, for the for the first few pages I thought I was like okay I see where this is going and then and then it kept changing and then and then by by episode two I was like okay I'm gonna give I, I give up I do not know where this is gonna go at all it's clearly like it's going to just be a roller coaster ride um and Jez does that so brilliantly. I mean, even even today, you know, I I I I see the the episodes, and I still forget some things. I'm like, wow, how did what? Wow, you know, like I still have that initial reaction, which is kind of crazy, um, mm. considering how long we worked on this and how well I know the script. But <laughs> but I still I still have it, and and also you know the edit of it is done beautifully and um, keeps you on your toes and. It's just, you know, it's such a, it's such an interesting piece to me because it, it's, it, on, on first glance, it feels like this is all so extreme. And then, um, and then, sorry, somebody rang the bell and then mm -hmm. some, and then you start to think about it and you realize this actually isn't that extreme. I mean, I know people who behave mm -hmm. this way or, or have been in these situations and have struggled through them and um, have done crazy things you know all in the name of love so it's uh it's it's got that interesting duality for me personally and we'll be right back right after this welcome back we're talking mammals it's kyle meredith with malia kreiling well, let's, um, you know, I, I won't say anything that sort of isn't given away in the trailer so far, but but there is some infidelity involved. And by the end of it, you know, I, I watched it with my wife the whole time. And of course, we're having these conversations <laughs> about the stereotypes and what a man is held to versus what a woman is held to <laughs> and, and, and what morals are in these situations. How much of the, that part of the conversation did you all have going into it? Um, I mean, it's it's definitely something that, you know, uh, every every uh, actor had to kind of navigate for themselves, and um, I think we were all on the same page, honestly, about um, just kind of that this story is kind of unflinching in its approach to not being didactic, but rather providing a space for a conversation to take place just like what you just described um watching it with your wife i think that's that's the fun of this whole thing um I, personally i think that it's very refreshing for me to play something and to read something and to watch something even where this you know this character that i that i play is uh so fearless and determined to go after this ideal love that she believes in this magical love that she believes in even though it, she does it in in what we consider today a very unorthodox way <laughs> <laughs> um she's uh and you know she she doesn't she doesn't apologize or explain and that's a, that's a that's a tricky quality to, ha yeah. to have <laughs> and it, it is it's like you know, with a lot of stories, the basic tropes or whatever, you know, you have the hero. And it's like, who's the hero of this story? Are you the hero of this story? Because <laughs> <laughs> she sure starts feeling like that. <laughs> the further you go. 
Well, I, you know, I think that, uh, again, the, the, the brilliance of um, Jez's writing is that the hero of the story changes just like it does in real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and, and that, and also it's, it's, it's different depending on who's watching it and what they've been through in their life and, and what their perspective is while, you know, at that, at that moment that they're watching this story. Um, you know, five years ago, maybe I would have been somebody who would have looked at, for example, my character and thought, God, she's a, she's a tough one. <laughs> she's, she's, she's a tough one to like, you know? And then five years later, I'm coming from a whole different place in my life where I've made mistakes in a, in, in a whole new way. And I've, I've dealt with things in a whole new way and I've, I'm seeing things in a whole new way. So suddenly, you know, now she, I see her as a hero, you know? So I think that's, what's beautiful about these characters that, that, there's so much space for, for, for an audience to really sort of project what they need to project on and think about things in a, in a way that could be, that, that, you know, maybe will be useful or, or at the very least entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it sort of goes along with the lines of what you're saying here. You, you showed up to the uh, premiere and you had the uh, Kintsugi uh, sort of tribute uh, on your on your arm with the gold paints, and I, I just loved what you said there because uh, I think the what the line I wrote down, what you might have written down, was a uh, human but hopeful brokenness. Yeah, and that yeah. seemed yeah. What what did you? I, I'll let, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. How did that relate to what you're talking about? Well, it's it's a little you know it's a little it was a little tongue in cheek moment for me. Um, I I just I I'm fascinated by kintsugi. It's the simplicity of it is actually so profound um, uh, as as a philosophy and as a as an art form. And I just thought that you know I I was reading a lot about it at the same time as we were filming, and I kind of adopted a little bit of it in order to approach this character in a, in a non-judgmental way. Um, we're all, we're all fractured human beings, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the whole romance of Amandine's character is that she refuses to be ugly when she's broken. She refuses to, to, to be destroyed and to let it all crumble again this is all upon a closer inspection of course but she you know she 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 wants she wants to put it back together she wants to put it all back together and it's you know it's hard to talk about without mm -hmm. talking about the specifics of of the story but but i i i like that and i believe in that and so for the premiere i wanted to just add a little touch of that you know um a little a little tribute of love to Amandine and and how she how she views things <laughs> yeah. no I, I loved how it all kind of intersected I, I I don't think I learned about Kintsugi until Death Cab for Cutie named an album after it but uh <laughs> <laughs> once I did it's, that was it's, it's funny I um I mean I don't I don't know if this is even appropriate to mention but I I I in, in a just because you brought it up uh I, I know one of the band members for death cab for cutie mm -hmm. zach ray and mm -hmm. and we, we went together to watch uh nick cave's concert in at the orpheum and um that's you know again he's he's an an, an idol of mine mm -hmm. of uh you know just kind of dealing with things like that in his music and in his writings you know and and grief and a lot of the things that we deal with in mammals and I watched I went to that concert just just after filming mammals and I felt very like a full circle came around just listening to his lyrics and his music and yeah it's funny you mentioned Death Cab for yeah. Cutie now well yeah. and, and I know you can't see it I have a a little action figure of Nick Cave right behind me um, where I'm <laughs> at right awesome. now so and um, awesome. and you seeing Patty Smith by the way I saw that I'm so jealous of seeing her I in Greece, did but, oh yeah. I mean it's it's been a good year for me in terms of seeing these <sighs> these people perform live and um just just sitting there f feeling so lucky to be in their presence <laughs> in, in an audience you know it's incredible because yeah. they deal with all of these issues it, right. you know in very different ways but but they 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 handle they they kind of deal with all of these issues and it's um it's great to kind of 
ponder and sit with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tie that back into it because, uh, you know, Tom Jones, of course, makes an appearance. I've had Tom on here a, a few times on my, on my show and, and just what a great situation that he has put in with, uh, you know, portraying this version of himself. Uh, <laughs> and I'm only going to throw out the, the big thing there. I don't know if you had any time with, uh, with Tom on the set, but uh, I, I'm just hoping there's some decent story with him around because it's seriously, uh, when we're talking first episodes and with him a part of it, you can't get any better than that moment. <laughs> I know, but I'm going to, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you because... <laughs> I, I was in the presence of someone who had COVID. And so once again, they quarantined me and I missed meeting Tom Jones. And oh. I, am, I am still upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, you know? Yeah. Right. He's yeah, one of the I best. Was, he I, is. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. he's incredible. And um, it's, it's so, it's, it's very poignant having him in the show in that way, in that instance, um, and in, in that sort of uh, portrayal of himself, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a fantastic story. Um, I selfishly still hope there's gonna be more at some point because I'm left left uh, on a moment where I could take more at the end of it too. Uh, Malia, you and so me much. both, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Uh, it was really, really great. Thank you, thank you very much for your time and, and your questions. And my thanks to Malia Kryling. Uh, again, Mammals on Prime Video now. Do check it out. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks to you for uh, checking out this episode and the series. Uh, please do, please do hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all the interviews that we uh, put out every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones. iTunes, Apple Podcasts, at Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or again, anywhere you get your podcast from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And then after that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. An hour full of song premieres and music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at wfpk.org. Consequence has your music and film news. Of course, you can also find me on the social media sides, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all three of them. The address is at Kyle Meredith. So I do hope you like and follow along. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. Bye. Nice to meet you. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media.